Hello, let's talk about unit testing. Um, we have the assignment in the course, if you remember, uh, to look at the system sequence diagram or the use case interact with object. And here is the system sequence diagram for that use case. Um, this might not be the best way of doing this. Normally you would just collect all the information you need and then we make one method call, but in order to get some fun interaction between the player and the game, uh, this is how it's selected to do it. So we select an object in the game, uh, we get back a list of interaction types and we select among them and then we select an interaction type and then we provide any particular options to that interaction type. Uh, once we've done all of this and we have a confirmation that everything is fine and we can co go ahead, then we launch the interaction. The game does whatever the interaction means and give me back a result. So, how can we make unit tests for this? Well, let's start. Now, the assignment says that you can pick your own favorite regression test framework. Uh, I am going to use Emacs and Emacs Lisp uh, because there is a built-in regression test framework there. So, uh, and everything is connected and uh, that way I also I can make the assignment, I can basically solve it for you, but I will be doing it in Lisp, so I doubt that you will uh, be able to just copy paste it into your solution, which means that you still have to think a bit on your own, which is good. Okay, let's start the file. And don't worry, by the way, about the Lisp thing, because I'll explain as I go along. What am I going to do first? I'm going to define my test. So, first of all, I call my define test, and this is just the name of the test uh, function. Nothing fancy, nothing strange there. Um, Emacs, or this re particular regression test suite in Emacs, basically executes all the tests in alphabetical order. And because this is a stateful test, normally unit tests uh, should be standalone so that they don't have to be executed in any particular order. Uh, so I'm going to bend a bit on the rules there because we have this session uh, that we would like to keep alive uh, so that we select an object and that's in this session uh, work, continue working with this particular selected object. In order to do that I'm going to introduce uh, a character A and the next test is going to be called B something there and which means that they will be executed in that order that I want. Now, for this particular test, what do I want to happen? I want to have a few local variables, and I'm going to use uh, rely on them uh, as I define the other local variables, which means that I need to use the let asterisk. Normal let basically means that, that everything happens, everything is defined in some undefined order. Let asterisk means that I, they are defined in the order that I write them. Um, I have a game object. I want to have my game which is, if you remember the uh, system sequence diagram, it's this object. Perhaps not the most intelligent name on a class, but uh, let's go ahead. Um, and I am going to call a method to give me a game object, if there is one, uh, or create a new one makes it easier for me to write the uh, subsequent test games. Right, next thing is I want to have a name. Um, this is just a string so that I don't have to type uh, the literal test object everywhere. I can, if I want to change this to something else, I can easily do that. And then we get the test, uh, the actual test object. This is a game object that I get from uh, the method select object on the object game. So this is compared to uh, C++ and uh, Java that you're used to. You normally write the object dot method 
in Lisp, you write the method and then you throw in the object as one of the parameters. Uh, right, and I want to do what more? I want to, uh, oh yes, test object name. Okay, so that these are the variables that I need for this particular test. Now, let's do some sanity check first. We should not have nil returned in our test object, meaning that I should get something back. Nil means null in whatever language you're used to. Um, so that's one test. And I should get something else. I should get back, if I look at the uh, whatever I get back, the test object, and if there's a name attribute on it, it should have the name, test object name, that I uh, defined. So, this variable keeps the, te the string test object, and then let's get the uh, name attribute out of the test object. Like that. Object reference and the object name test object and the attribute name. Okay. And close that up. Save. Evaluate. And then we can actually run this test. And it fails. I'm going to put this to the side so I keep it there. It fails, which it should, because I haven't written anything else, obviously. Put in a line break so I can narrow down things later on. What do I need to do now in order to get this test to work? Uh, that's the first thing I need to take care of, because this is, well, test-driven development, right? So I have a test and it fails, so I need to make sure that I get everything I need in place so that I can um, actually, this test will pass. So we had the method mstreet test get game. Uh, that one isn't defined yet, so I need to define that. I have a few sheet sheets pap papers here, so uh, that's what the, the flipping noises you hear. Um, right. I need a function then. Uh, define a function m streets test get game with an optional parameter called clear. <coughs> um, or clean. That's even better. Document it. So I return a test game and I create one if needed, which is nice, right? So what should be uh, true? Either I get the clean flag, uh, or I don't have any game already created. Like that. And I need to quote that because it doesn't exist yet. or it is simply nil, which isn't good either. So if I say clean things up for me, give me a new object, or there is nothing bound, or I've cleared it somehow and bound it to uh, nothing at all, then what should I do? Well, then I should create my game And I should do what more? I should initialize things. In it. 
and that's the method that I'm going to call on my game object. Right, nothing more there. Uh, now set this into a global attribute. The one that I was looking for earlier. There we have it. So now I have now there is there's going to be an attribute or a, a global variable called M Street Test Game Object, uh, and it's going to have the same game object that I created here, which is nice. Close things up a bit, and whatever else happens, whether I create one or uh, I, there was one existing already, uh, let's return that. So in Lisp, everything, the last um, statement executed is the return value. The return of the last statement executed is the return value of a function. So this means that I return the game object if it existed. Well, it should exist by now because I created it. Uh, one thing worth noting already here, by the way, is that <coughs> there's everything in Emacs Lisp is in the same global namespace. So I'm going to lead every function name, everything by the M streets uh, moniker to make sure that they, I keep myself in my own uh, namespace. That's the standard practice when programming Emacs Lisp. Okay, that means that I now am able to get a game, either get or uh, create one. Uh, I still don't have the class game the game class, but so I need to do something about that. Those, by the way, those control L things that you see is uh, they, are, they are page breaks, which means that I can later on, uh, if I want to zoom in on this particular function, um, I can do so, and then I can get back to where I was. So just. Um, in Java, you have to have a new file for each class. In C++, it's strongly recommended. I guess in Emacs it's, or in Lisp, it's supposed to be done in more or less the same way, but this is going to be a relatively small example, so I'm going to take a few shortcuts and put everything in the same file. It's because of the global namespace, it really doesn't matter anyway. Now, let's define this class. Um, where do I... Uh, right. There we are. Define a class, M Streets Game. Don't inherit from anything. Let's. Mm, I don't have any attributes uh, in this class for the moment. Um, I have a documentation. Like this. That's my definition of a class. Uh, what else would it? So that means that I can now run this line. Actually, I can't because I need to execute that. There, now I can run this line. And gives me back a game object. Uh, and I can start working on it. I was calling the mstreets init method. That and I'm not going to do anything in this method at the moment. I'm going to keep that empty. Uh, what I am going to do is, and this would have made slightly more sense if I'd have had this in a separate file. Uh, rather than having it all in the same play place, but um, sure, you get the idea. Uh, what I am going to do is that I am going to tell in my test setup 
that I'm going to add things to whatever M Street uh, streets in it does. just keep this like that for now uh, and in this one in this method I am going to get give some uh, populated with some test objects uh, how do I do that I do a let And I want a test object, which is a game object. There we have it. Uh, and I am going to put that into a scene. If you remember the domain model, we had scenes uh, that contained game elements, which might be game objects, right? a scene uh, has a name and it's got uh, a few elements lying around slushing around in the, that scene like so Uh, what else there? So I've got an object, I create that, and I have a scene that I create like that, and I give it that object as part of the constructor. This basically is the constructor for the uh, scene class now, and this is initializing the name attribute and initializing the elements attribute. Let's store this in my game class as well. There. So in the variable object, which is M Street game, store into an attribute called current scene, current scene, whatever object is, whatever is in the variable test scene, like that. And close up all the parentheses. That should do the trick. Um, now I just need to define that attribute into my game class. So I actually have something that I can um, store it in. It's got a type, don't really care which type at the moment. It's empty when I start. Since this is a list, I need to do it like that as well. There, which means that I can now do this. What I haven't done now is, of course, I haven't defined the scene, I haven't defined the game object or the game elements. So let's do that as well. Game element should have a name. No need to document that right now. We know what that means. Uh, game object inherits from game element and 
doesn't define anything additional at right now so let's just keep that simple and empty um, and then we had the scene scene actually has same thing has a name and not much more so if I just copy paste that I could actually make sure that scene inherits from game element as well that would make sense in many ways but I don't think we had that in the domain model so let's stick at least a bit to what we've done before in the course um, hmm? so now what can happen I can going back to uh, the initialize here I can create a new test scene it has a name ah the elements attribute I didn't ha haven't defined that one yet So game elements, which I'm going to address with the colon elements, uh, is to begin with an empty string, or an empty list, sorry, uh, and it is of the type list, so I can throw in a number of objects in there. That's nice and dandy. Um, let's see, have I missed anything? Um, not really. That takes care of things. I'm one parenthesis short. So now I can create my scene. I can create my object. Good. And I can store that in the current scene. Uh, and I can call the init and I get that object. And so now what's going to happen if I run this? an error somewhere. Ah yeah, that's cause the class name wasn't quite as I specified it. Okay, so now I evaluated everything and then let's just run the test. I get a new error. I don't know if I saw that I got a different error earlier. Um, by the way, taking some time to parse the, the output I get over here in the uh, test gray, te test uh, frame, is that I have zero pass tests. I have one failed test uh, that Emacs didn't expect to fail, but it did. It uh, means I can instruct that these tests should fail uh, for the time being, and then they are um, counted differently. Um, and I have got one test running. Here is information about this line gives me all the tests and, uh, that have passed and failed and then the order they are run. This one gives me information about the failed tests and I can do things here. I can look at any output I got from this, running this particular test. I can run a debug trace on it. We'll probably come back to this later on if I have to uh, um, do some error checking somewhere if I, if I mistype something. Um, now, and here is the problem I got right now, that select object isn't implemented yet. It should be implemented in the game object. So let's do it there. What do I need to do with the select object? First of all, I am... Um, passing in the object, uh, the owner of the method, if you will. And an object name. So that I can select, for example, uh, giving, give it a string and select for that. Uh, right. Select object. What should that do? Well, it should Let's document it. Should select the game object. 
Uh, first of all, let's find the scene. Pick it out of my uh, my object, the game object. And with this, game object. Call the method select object on this scene, looking for the object name, and put whatever you get into the attribute or the, the local variable game object. Uh, what else? That's it, right? And now, if I didn't get anything back, let's write something about that. Otherwise, or in any case, return the game object that I got. Like that. Which means that I need to write a method select object for uh, the scene as well. Let's document. I do something called object associate. So, in my object, get the attribute game elements, and among all those objects that I have now, which is in a list, uh, run through them, look at the name attribute, and compare that with the object name. Uh, those that are returned true from that, those that match, object name and the name attribute, return them. That should be sufficient for me to find uh, if there is a particular object there. And then that should be do the trick. Let's see what happens now. Now I have something to fill in the select object. And run the test. And I have a passing test. Look at the details, it passed. No messages, debug trace, no debug trace worthwhile because everything worked as it should. So that is our first uh, unit test for this uh, game class. I'm, so now I can look for a select object and I get something and uh, I can look whether it's the right thing or not. Whether, what is the right thing? Well, I have in my tests, let's narrow down here. Actually, let's remove this one because... No. Let's remove this one for now. So. Here's my test, give me a game, uh, define a string, give me a test object that matches that uh, uh, string, so test something called test object, and I'm not getting no nothing to back, which is good, and whatever I get back has the name, let's see, there, has the name test object, so that's good. I could do other things. I could check that it's actually uh, the right test object. I can throw in one more and I can see that I get it back and everything. But this is good enough for me. Um, 
these two methods, the first two, is some form of scaffolding, if you will. They set up the test for me, uh, create the game object, create the test object, create the test scene in it. Oh yes, I promised I was going to do something with this method. Uh, if you look at, I had this init method, and I wanted to do to add to that method. I don't want to redefine it, which also is what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, I just want to add to it. So do whatever you did before, but also do this. That's what I'm saying now. Um, that takes care of the first test. And I am going to take a pause now, and I will continue actually tomorrow morning with the next test. Bye.